gas is approaching your position. Get to the safe here we go. Right here. Let's go. Trust me. Let's go. Let's go. Hey everyone, I'm Puri. Welcome to Purology. This is a face-off between the Intel i9-12900K and the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D in Call of Duty Warzone at 1440p. The 12900K is a hybrid architecture chip. It has 8 P cores and 8 E cores. The P stands for performance, the E stands for efficiency. The E cores have been disabled for this test. The ring clock is at 4.8 gigahertz and the P cores have been overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz. The V core is at 1.35 volts. It's running DDR5 RAM at 5200 megahertz CL38. The 5800X3D is undervolted with a negative 30 offset using PBO2 tuner. The X3D features 3D V cache. It's AMD's way of saying they found a way to vertically stack caches on top of the CPU in order to increase the capacity of the L3 cache. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest innovations in computer technology in a long while because it changed the way I look at gaming performance. Cache capacity was never something I looked at before this chip existed. And now I found that it's even more important than a super fast clock speed or lower latency RAM. So it turned my thinking process on its side a little bit, and I like when companies do that. I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side footage of the two systems running Call of Duty Warzone at 1440p. Then I'll do a statistical comparison to determine a winner of the face-off. Wow, that's a ballsy place. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No gun here. Right up here. Primary objective is to eliminate all and a surprise bomb. Secure that position. Let's get a loady. Oh, someone's got the helicopter. Pick that up. Where are you going? Oh, there you are. Darling. an hollow box sometime in if I can find it. Bro. Uh, precision. Oh, I know where he is. Just the precision though. Find a safe spot coming. Contract time expired. Oh, Target's been true. lost. Guys I was sniping. Wait, where the inside? Oh, uh, right below you. <laughs> I can see your name. Alright, so looking at the numbers, the 5800X3D has the advantage in FPS average and max by about 10%. It leads in the FPS minimum category as well by about 20%. And it falls behind the 12900K on the FPS 1% low and the FPS 0.1% low by about 20% in both of those categories as well. This is kind of what I've seen with Ryzen chips. There are a lot of peaks and valleys in Warzone performance. All right, now let's see the power draw and the temperatures for the CPU and GPU. The 5800X3D was at 78 watts while the 12900K was at 115 watts. So that's a 37 watt difference. The temperature for the 5800X3D was at 61, while the 12900K was at 76. That's a 15 degrees Celsius difference in operating temperatures. That's pretty significant to me. In terms of GPU temperature, on the 5800X3D, it was at 71. On the 12900K, it was at 76. 
This could actually be because the 12900K was in a closed case while the 5800X3D is on my open bench table platform. So just keep that in mind for the GPU temps. In terms of power, you can see that the 6950XT draws more power, about 30 watts more, when paired with the 5800X3D. All this to me indicates that the GPU is less bottlenecked with the 5800X3D in Warzone. After playing on both systems and comparing results, I can definitively say that the 5800X3D wins this face-off. The game feels great on both systems, don't get me wrong, and the performance is pretty similar, similar enough where they feel damn close. The difference to me is the efficiency the X3D does it with compared to the gas guzzling 12900K on the other side. There's no doubt that the 12900K can get pretty close to the performance of the 5800X3D and who knows, maybe even better performance with the right tuning. The thing is the 12900K is 30 to 40% more expensive than the X3D. You need to get the fastest RAM possible which is very expensive. Then you need to spend time tuning down the timings on the RAM which is time consuming. Then you'll need to tune the overclock on the processor itself. Then you'll need extreme cooling in order to maintain those high clocks that the 12900K can achieve. When you compare this to the 5800X3D, you can pair a 5800X3D with a B550, let's say, and the slowest RAM you can find, and it will probably outperform that 12900K or be on the same level straight out of the box. So will they be close in performance? Yes. Is the 12900K bad? No. The, the 5800X3D is just that much better. It's like comparing an old big block V8 to a modern turbocharged engine. The V8 needs to burn way more fuel to match the performance of a modern turbo engine. And can the V8 sort of match it in terms of outright performance? Yeah, maybe if you give it enough displacement and make it burn a ton of fuel. But the efficiency gap is what makes the V8 obsolete now. And in my view, the 12900K is that big block V8 and the 5800X3D is that new modern turbocharged engine that's going to make the V8 obsolete. Hey everyone, this is Puri. Well, this is a face-off between the i9. I'm, I'm going to show you some side by f the and uh, the it feet the fifth the X then I'll do a statistical, then I'll do a statistical, then I'll do a statistical, then I'll do a statistic, dude, <laughs> then I'll do a statistic.